Hey, 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 guys. Welcome to I Got Problems again. My name is Sandra and I'm with Annabelle. <laughs> I just felt like being extra. Bruh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am here with Annabelle. Okay, thanks yes. for joining me in this podcast. Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, this topic today, uh, before we even get started, just wanted to take a second. Of course, if you haven't reviewed our podcast, take a second, preferably on Apple Podcasts so we can actually see the reviews. We have other sources as well, but Apple Podcasts is the most popular, you know, method. Mm -hmm. So feel free to take a second. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, we are up and coming and our views are increasing. Thanks to those who have watched and subscribed. So please take a second and to do that as well. And if you want to, we have resources on, um, multiple different things. We'll link that at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. So, or, and the podcast audio as well. So don't, you know, just click off so soon so you can at least, or I mean, click the description box and find it, you know, whatever. Just make sure you use the resources. They're actually really useful. Um, and that, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) With that being said, (laughs) so episode 28, y'all, episode 28. So I wanted to talk about this and in a perfect world. Yes. Um, Annabelle was bringing up that we would have had male guest hosts here, um, but we have guest host male hosts coming in the future. But I, I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about this from our perspective, um, mostly because we are black women who get discriminated against a lot. Yes. And we are women of different sizes and we get discriminated a lot based on whatever mm-hmm. size you're at because people discriminate no matter what. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I just wanted us to, to get our own opinion so you can see where I'm coming from. So, of course, the topic today is are your dating preferences actually discriminatory? Good question. Do you just say, you know what, I date women of all this shades and i really don't have discrimination because i have opinions and options and whatever whatever you want to tell yourself to go to bed at night (laughs) or do you say i only like to date a girl that's above this color and no more like i've never dated a girl that's you know darker than a paper bag i've never i've never dated a girl who's shorter than this height i've never dated a girl that's more than 150 pounds like are those your preferences because I got to tell you today, guys, it's really not a preference anymore when you're limited to one type of thing mm-hmm. and you never actually venture off. And you know what? I kind of want to get into the definition of what a preference yes, is. Yes, yes. To be clear. So let's explain that. Yes. For example, I prefer orange juice over apple juice. Like uh, orange juice more? Absolutely. But that does not mean that I would not drink apple juice. Right. Because I actually do crave it sometimes. So you discriminate against apple juice when you never ever taste apple juice. And, and you're like, that's you know what? not a preference. I don't even, not because you've tasted apple juice and you were allergic, but mm-hmm. because you just looked at apple juice and you were like, that doesn't look like something I want to taste. So mm-hmm. I ain't never going to try it. You never tried apple juice. So how do you know if you don't like it? So that becomes discrimination because you're discriminating against one side without even knowing anything trying yeah. it it's different when you date it because some guys would be like oh i don't date scorpios because they blah 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 if you dated a bunch of okay so that was a little inside joke there. it's okay though i'm gonna no, let that shit slide I'm, I'm coming for all of y'all this is not a horoscope <laughs> episode but i'm coming for all of y'all with the horoscope world horoscopes don't dictate your life let's be clear <laughs> yes i trust the stars the moon the planet i'm religious okay yeah i know everything is aligned i know the numbers everything makes sense sure mm-hmm. but you cannot wake up in the morning and literally live your life based on some a horoscope thing because you know what that yeah. horoscope is based on millions of people in the world and yes maybe out of five million one million might experience that but the other four probably don't let's be realistic so mm-hmm. not because i can read a horoscope today and call a bunch of sagittarius in the room and they'll be mm-hmm. like that ain't never happened to me because it's not one fit all so just be clear about that if you date somebody who did you wrong and i hate mm-hmm. the backlash i get for people who talk shit about sagittarius we not shit why you gotta go the there bomb. first of all it's corporate season so why are we talking about sagittarius Whatever, people right always have some shit to say oh who hurt you sagittarius who broke your heart sagittarius. True, I not to commit but <laughs> moving on it's not about commitment it's about <laughs> knowing exactly who you want to be with and sometimes that takes time so mm-hmm. sorry i don't just commit to anything that walks by a whole year Okay. <laughs> the fuck? Don't give me this shit. Yeah, I don't have to commit. I don't, I don't want to hear it. But the point here is like <laughs> discrimination happens when you really don't give the other group a chance and you have negative yeah. connotations a- attached to that group. Oh, I don't date this group simply because of this and this. It's like, do you even know much about them? Oh, you had one bad experience. Okay, cool. And then you never like, you know, it's and a lot of a lot of black men tend to have this thing called preferences, which is mm. overshadowing discrimination. We're not talking shit about black men. We're just talking about the group that has the majority of the problem. What now? There are tons of groups as well because you can see some white men who date 
actually a lot of white men who date within their race. Mm -hmm. I think black men are the only group of people who date outside of their race more than inside of their race. Percentage wise, they do. They do. Percentage wise. Percentage. Now, we don't have facts for every single thing. Right. We don't have the numbers for every single thing, but I mean, just think about those men around you and see how many of the men, black men around you have dated Mm non-black women and how many of the black women around you have dated non-black men. There's even recently, of course, um, some athlete that came out, I'm not sure if he's in NBA or NFL, that um decided to come out his mouth and say, Oh, dating white women is better because black oh women give God. you attitude, blah, blah, blah. And it's always that one. It comes it's like once every and year. And we had a post on our page about understand. that too. We, we had yes, a post on our page a couple weeks ago. It was just literally young children, young black kids. But the thing is that's an, this is not oh. a child. This is a grown ass man. And that's the thing though. Those children look up to those trash grown ass men. Yeah. And then come out talking about well black girls literally the girl interviewing him was like, so you wouldn't need a girl my skin color? He was like, no. Because, because y'all skin, are mean. Yeah, he, he said dark skin girls are mean and they give attitude. I was like, oh my God, you are like 16. What the hell do you know about dark skin women? Like, this is insane to me. But anyway, that's just part of it. So we're going to talk about the weight preferences and the colorism preferences. So mm-hmm. from music taste to appearance, everyone has preferences when looking for a partner. We know that, okay? We're not we're aware however where is the line between a preference and being exclusionary or discriminatory Mm -hmm. and sometimes just simply racist npr reported that black women and asian men are more likely to be discriminated against on dating apps than any other race Mm -hmm. this shows how important race can be on these apps and how people can be stereotypes and seen as undesirable and compared to whiteness so when huge another huge um (laughs) issue is body shaming when that occurs a lot of people tend to feel really bad about themselves because it's something some things you can't control some things you're born with some things are genetic but when somebody makes comments about your body your looks that Mm -hmm. that becomes a problem so on dating apps i've seen no fats allowed or no chubs in profile biases Mm -hmm. so it's kind of or only spice and rice (laughs) that is disgusting (laughs) oh my god wow way to be offensive and pretty much turn away the people that you're actually trying to attract exactly so it's like an environment that fat shames people Mm -hmm. or race shames color shame whatever isn't a safe space for Mm -hmm. anyone so why would you want to be on that app anyway um so being plus size also creates an unwelcoming environment Mm -hmm. that reinforces the idea that bodies that don't meet these standards of european society are undesirable the issue can extend to people with disabilities as well Mm -hmm. and how they may be treated when dating and in other institutions um skinny women also get called out but it's not at the same level as a bigger woman let's be clear because i remember through uh, middle school i would always be called skinny or toothpick or whatever i was like 96 pounds i was like you were a toothpick (laughs) i was really tiny i was a young child and i'm still skinny now compared to my peers so Mm -hmm. that's crazy because it took me 20 years basically no actually it took me 15 years to gain 50 pounds are you serious? Yes. Like, oh my God, you see yourself blessed. <laughs> you want to take some from me, please? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I'll, take, I'll take it in the boobs and the butt area. But like, you know, I always talk about that. Like, can you transplant? Like, I, I hate the fact that if I go to the doctor, I have to transplant my own fat. Why can't I get somebody else's fat? Shit. Like, I don't want to have to... Tell you the poverty would probably reject it. I know, I know, I know, but it's like, I hate to think about it. But anyway, so like, just to be sure, you know, all our struggles matter Mm because I know there are skinny girls who are just like, well, you know, we get shamed too. And we get, it's like, look, at the end of the day, you get shamed, but your body is more accepted in the community and environment than a bigger person. So even though you get shamed as well, you're not getting shamed as much as a black person. I mean, I said black person. I said Do you a bigger know person. that Victoria's Secret just... They just did. Just got a plus size model. And I think it's because and of you know why. Exactly. <laughs> I was just about to yep. say that. Yep. Like cultural appropriate. Yep. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. Um, and also with disabilities, there was a tweet that I just read um like a few days ago about a girl who was like, yes, disabled people have sex too. She was like, my husband be giving it all every night. We be getting it, you know, we be getting it on. And people mm-hmm. were like, she was like, I'm so, and then she commented under her tweet like, y'all really mad that a disabled girl is getting more ass than you. And I was like, damn, people wow. are talking, why were people talking shit? If a disabled person is saying like, as a disabled person, this is my experience. And you talking shit about her experience? Mind your business. She said she's getting some ass mm-hmm. or she's getting some dick with her man, her man, her fiance, by the way. Mm. And you talking shit about the fact that she was getting some, is this your man? What were like, people saying? I can't were, imagine. I think they were just being uncomfortable with the fact that she said I'm disabled. And I, I'm like, what are you uncomfortable about? What is, what is bothering you from somebody being, so are you bothered by disability mm-hmm. or are you bothered by a disabled person having sex or both? Like, I don't understand. Think about people. They have needs. I don't get it. Like, I, I don't think about disabled people getting it on, but 
It's like why? Why should it be but a they problem? They have to get it on. It's like why should it be a problem? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so my last comment before we even get to the stats and facts is: if all you date, this is in response to preferences. Mm-hmm. If you're still thinking, oh, it's a preference, it's a preference, because every time I talk to a guy and I bring up the fact that it's not, they always want to argue about the fact that oh, so this is all you date. You only date this group of women. You only date light skinned mm-hmm. women. You only date mixed looking mm-hmm. women. You only date shorter women. You only date girls under one fifty pounds. But you say it's not a preference. Why? Well, let me explain to you. Okay, if all you date are women or men the same shade of mm. paper bags or under or women and under under 160 pounds and you have no variety or no attempt at even trying something outside of that box mm-hmm. can you really still call that a simple preference preference or is nah. it just discriminatory think about that like if you never and it's different if you dated all types and you're like you right. know what? i tend to like this one better so i'm yeah. gonna keep gravitating towards but that this doesn't one. mean you'll full out exclude the other you just have a drawing or an attraction to this group exactly. more than you do the other group i but mean that's why men can uh, men can be attracted to me and not you and attracted to you and not me they have preferences mm-hmm. but we're both black women so Absolutely. whatever the preference is it's probably still more open than somebody who only dates somebody who's light-skinned so, quote-unquote good hair quote-unquote yeah. mixed quote-unquote mulatto whatever you want to call it but like if you only did that group and sadly a lot (laughs) i hate to call it out every time but y'all a lot of black men really Mm. make the rest of y'all hard working black men out here look bad and to be honest the ones who talk the most shit are the loudest that's so they make make the rest of you look bad which is why we call out on it but to be honest Mm -hmm. we love all our black men that support black women but the ones who don't they're the ones who really call out on this podcast when we do it's not because we don't like black men we all date black men (laughs) so we just want to call out those ones who try to make the rest of y'all look bad because they Mm -hmm. need to be called out otherwise they're gonna keep doing this bullshit so if you're listening to this and this is you please don't tune off the podcast we still got more shit to say (laughs) so okay so here's a statistic um skin color uh, from um, i got it from npr and a few websites we'll list that later Mm -hmm. skin color will continue to serve as the most obvious criterion in determining how a Mm -hmm. person will be evaluated and judged it's the first thing you see yeah in this country because of deeply entrenched racism and i say deeply yeah very deep the roots Okay, it's like a root canal. You're gonna have to get rid of the whole tooth in this case. You can't even you can't even <laughs> fix that. That's how I'm saying I don't know what we're gonna do, but <laughs> something's gotta change. Didn't she but have some dental work this I week? I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> I was like, why she use all these teeth? Because it was like, a root canal. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> yes, y'all. This dental struggle is not cheap. Okay, I, mm-hmm. I feel like I said Cardi B got a bag and fix my teeth. I hope you hoes know it ain't cheap because it's a car note. <laughs> Don't even say that. Um, wow. But anyway, uh, so and the country. This we already know that dark skin is more demonized and light skin wins the prize usually. Mm-hmm. So that occurs precisely because this country was built on principles of racism. I mean, come on. I want to talk about all the rules of racism back then, but you know, mm-hmm. Jim Crow. <laughs> Google it. Um, One job, paper bag, as you mentioned. Exactly. A times so well. the privileging of light skin over dark is at the root of an ill known as co- or illness known as colorism. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a um, what you call it, uh, fact or not so fact, but some of you might not know. But contrary to popular assumptions, calling negative as- attention to people's weight does not motivate them to adopt weight or exercise loss. Um, let me tell you this from a personal perspective. <laughs> mm. I told my mom, like, I'm going to start getting disrespectful with some of these aunts. First thing, you see me. They don't know where to me. stop. <laughs> First thing. Oh, you gain weight. Well, thanks. I haven't noticed. I have a mirror at home, you know. Like. The same thing happens to me. They'd be like, oh, did you lose weight? Oh, oh, okay. You need to eat more. You need to eat mm. more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sandra, you know cooking for her. It's... <laughs> And this is not now because I've gained weight now. Right. But like I would come back from college and the first my, my mom before I walk into the door, ah, did you lose weight? <laughs> I'm like, can I just get my bags in the door? So right. Like, <laughs> so it happens to the best of us and all of us I'm and everyone. You. So research suggests that mm. weight stigma worsens the quality of life for people mm-hmm. on its receiving end, even increasing the mortality rates, and probably because of such factors as increased stress and depression. So yeah. you're telling somebody and if you're at a restaurant and you see a big person go order a Big Mac, you don't stare hard at them. How yeah. about you start off there? Don't look hard at somebody. That's their choice and that's their decision to eat whatever they want to eat. Mm-hmm. And you can't be looking at them like, 
You shouldn't be eating this. You're too big. You're whatever. You shouldn't be. No, that's not your business. Yeah. And you looking at them, making them feel uncomfortable is making them feel even worse about themselves and just eating regular food that you can eat without any issues. Absolutely. So keep in mind that metabolism, genetics also plays a role into it. And of course, if it's like a close friend or family member, do approach them because you love them and care about them, but approach them in love, not out of criticism, because like she said, that's not going to work. Exactly. So mm-hmm. an individual's weight is not is also not a protected um statute or attribute under any federal law which sucks um mm-hmm. as such the generally concepted or accepted concept of at will employment will apply an employer can deny or terminate mm-hmm. employment for any legal reason it wants including weight wow. as of 2019 Wow. Yep. This is a recent improvement. So your boss, if you're, if you live in, a, we live in an at will state, Maryland. Mm-hmm. If you live in an at will state, that means they can fire you at will without real reason. And if you mm-hmm. have to give a reason, one of those reasons can be your weight, and it's allowed because it's legal. So there's actually no legal laws protecting you against because <laughs> colorism and racism is under discrimination. But mm-hmm. if you want to file a lawsuit uh, of discrimination against your weight, you're gonna you're gonna yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not, there's no case. <laughs> exactly. You're less likely to win. You have to. Prove a lot more stuff happening outside of that. Yeah. Um, but another funny fact. So we talked about colorism. So in case you didn't know, the word colorism doesn't actually exist. It's not a real word. So a lot of people are I type in colorism, but if you ever notice when you type in colorism, you have the red squiggly line underneath because it's not a dictionary term. So mm. at, at least not officially. It autocorrects on one's computer screen and it does not appear in the dictionary. Mm. Colorism was defined in 1983 as prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on their color Mm -hmm. light skin preference had been common practice in the black community for generations Mm -hmm. obviously due to slavery history now let's not talk about the fact that this stuff is huge in new orleans (laughs) when i say huge i mean gigantic like i want to feel like i want to say it pretty much originates from that area and you know big deeper south areas but like Mm -hmm. New Orleans is huge. Like, I mean, they literally still associate you and your color by the family you come from. Like, oh, wow. that lighter side comes from that side of the, you know, road mm-hmm. because th- those side on that side of the road look like this. Mm-hmm. So it's, pr- it's pretty big. Um, and black people, come on, we, we just got to do better, but you know, one step at a time. Um, black Americans are not the only people obsessed with how light or dark a person is. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear. Okay, mm-hmm. if you can go back all the way to the Philippines, where a lot of the light lotion bleaching creams are created, mm-hmm. you can go back all the way to different parts of India where they still have untouchables oh, yeah. or dark skinned Indians, and they're seen as beneath the you know mm-hmm. line and the ones who are usually poverty stricken and doing the you know basic Menial work. work. Yeah. Exactly, and um, colorism is a societal illness felt in many places all around the world, including yes. Latin America, East and South Asia. Caribbeans and Africa. And I keep saying it's uh, racism bashed their child because literally it is. It is. It is. Like the only reason light skinned black people exist or mulattoes or half and halves, whatever you want to call them, mm. is because of the rape and exactly. often I don't know no black person. Willful I- getting together of exactly. blacks and whites during the slave era. And if we remember era. back then, we didn't, none of us here today, or at least in around our age, were ever part of the slavery time. So we can only hear from experiences of older adults. But mm-hmm. even if you weren't there, you know not enough and through the experience that none of your ancestors were out here throwing it back for the white. Right. Uh, Massa. Not purpose. <laughs> Do you really think your yeah. great grandma was throwing it back for Massa? Mm-hmm. No, sis. No. So if you want to know back in your Thomas history, Thomas Jefferson and his side chick, um, all of them, like they Mar- were raping Martha, them. Sarah, something like that. And if you've seen mm-hmm. all the you know slavery movies, they keep making and keep drowning us in. <laughs> <laughs> 12 years a slave, 5 years a slave, 12 years a slave, part 2, part 5. Like, we're tired I'm of it. it. I mean, we're over, over it. it. Um, but if you've watched any of those movies, you'll know by now that you never actually see a black woman throw herself at a massa unless she's doing it to protect her family. Yeah. But usually she's being raped. And a lot of black men felt dehumanized and just just broken down because they really couldn't do much because if they did, they would get killed. Mm-hmm. So you have to watch your wife and your partner basically get taken over by this massa, get pregnant, have his kid... Mm. And take care of those kids because Master still didn't see those light-skinned kids as his. Absolutely. Because it wasn't pure white. So, like... Because his wife wasn't supposed to know. Where exactly. the light-skinned babies come from, I don't know. And, I mean, <laughs> duh, like, everybody here, Doug, you're telling me, like... I mean, they figured it out. And that's also why a lot of the um, slavery slave owners' wives would mm-hmm. treat the black women really shitty. Mm-hmm. Which also comes all the way down to Karen, Stacey's, and Becky's. Mm-hmm. They have that sense of ownership and t- mm-hmm. entitlement. Yes. Ever oh feel... Gosh. Ever walk on the sidewalk and a white person doesn't move? Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> we end up bumping each other sometimes. Bruh. When yeah. you walk on a sidewalk and a white person is literally coming at you like you're supposed to move. Like, mm-hmm. they own the sidewalk. 
I pay my taxes. And that's just white people, men too, but men, that's yeah, another that, story. Yeah, that's yeah, its own category. Yeah. They also feel that power of just like bow down, bitch. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like, you know, it's it's, it's all in just engraved. And then they have the audacity to brush by you and not even say, Oh, I'm sorry. Like Oh, have you been to New York? That's all they do in New York. I mean that's New York. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care about you. But anyway. I feel like that's just more like a cultural thing there in New York than it is. I, like I get in so angry. You know I'm like, I mean? you can't say excuse me, like, because I don't, I don't, I'm not from New it's York. It's New so York. I know, and I hate it. I hate the fact that that's they're a fast paced. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta, you know, it's so annoying. Um, but the last fact here is a 2006 University of Georgia study found that employers of any race, any race, we're talking about black employers, white employers, Spanish employers, any race, preferred light skinned black men I'm not to dark skinned black men. Mm-hmm. regardless of their qualifications. Because they're seen as less threatening. Yep. So it is not just the looks, y'all. It is systematic and mm-hmm. life-changing. Mm-hmm. It is not just, oh, we just prefer. The- no, when you prefer someone who's lighter than me, mm-hmm. who gets a better job than me, they have a better way of life than me. They mm-hmm. have a better way to provide for their family more than I do. Their lifestyle changes yeah. and climbs up ladders than it me. It affects everything, everything in their life, it not just their down. dating preferences. And it's so yeah. frustrating because when people say stuff... They're so quick to say preference, preference, preference. It's like, it's not a preference when it's mm-hmm. affecting your entire way of life. It's making you depressed. It's affecting your thought process. Mm-hmm. It's affecting how you view yourself, how you look in the Absolutely. mirror. It is not preference anymore. You're discriminating. Simply call yeah. it what it is. It is discrimination. So you want to convince yourself that, yeah, I like all light-skinned women. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. all short women. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like all skinny women. Whatever you want to call it, but you never have seen anything else out of that category as okay as ideal as an option you're discriminating just be honest with yourself and if you still don't agree with us i don't want to tell you that sounds like a personal problem it because sounds like people <laughs> just want to remain ignorant if you want to that... remain ignorant at least we did what we could each yeah, one we did our one. job we did our <laughs> job so that being said i want to ask annabelle a few questions um i'm ready have you been discriminated against because of your yeah. weight or color by friends family or strangers <laughs> yes absolutely wow I mean, we already discussed that anyway. We talked about it. Of course. I mean, not just, you know, personally, of course, you always have those people on social media that's like, oh, I hate black women. I hate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just posted it. It is on what it is. Page. I mean, for weight, um, this is just me personally. Uh, of course, weight can change. So I'm not really like too hurt about that. Height gets discriminated against, I think, a lot more yeah. because it's not something you can change. And I think right. when I see that online, guys are like, well, if y'all talking about our height, well, we don't like your weight. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, but you can't get taller. Yeah. She can go get BBL and be looking like a bad bitch. So- can you get BBL for your feet? No, you can't. <laughs> BPL for your feet. Good no, God. you can't. I'm sorry. So in high school, I was friends with this uh, Dominican chick. Of course, she was uh, light skinned. Um, and then she was um, friends with another Dominican chick who like pretty much just came fresh um from back home mm-hmm. and kind of told her don't be friends with me because I'm dark skin. Yeah, we had we all had the same like art class or whatever. Oh and the God. thing is she would befriend other black people but because I'm dark. Mm. Yeah. Also of course middle school I had my bullying there too um based on my skin t- not just my skin but also my ethnicity, my background as well um being African. Yeah. So. I definitely had the color thing as well when I was in middle school. I don't know mm-hmm. how, but I think in middle school, being a kid and mm-hmm. playing in the sun all the time, I was extra chocolatey. Mm-hmm. And I had one guy in middle school, which I don't even remember his name. No, I think it was like Daniel or something. It was mm-hmm. that was that's all I you remember. Gotta look at your book. <laughs> I mean, you still got the middle school. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so a guy named Daniel. That's all I remember. He basically was just like, yeah, he he was, he was like. Why are you sitting at our table? We can't even see you or something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that- I'm telling you, middle school was... Yeah, it was life-changing. Like, in <laughs> high school, it, for me, it, it, it even got even worse there. Well, I won't say really? worse. It was pretty much the same, but I was like... High school, just I got more fun of willing, being skinny more than... More being. so willing to just let playing it roll out. off my back. And that was the thing. I stopped playing out in the sun so much because... And the thing is, it stopped me from even joining track and field in high school because of that comment really? made in middle school. Because middle school, he was... This guy had made me feel like I was just so dark that I was like midnight dark. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't play in the sun anymore because p- people can't see me. And of course, I was like, what, 12, 13? Like, I was young 
and mm-hmm. dumb and you know so of course high school i didn't join the track and field team till like junior year of high yeah. school because i was just like scared that i was gonna get dark in the sun because we always practice in the sun so it really affected my thought process and then it wasn't until yeah. later on and I, my my younger sister experienced that type of situation too and she started trying to like attempt to lighten her skin wow. because she was afraid like like it was such a mess that, there was a point in college that i did attempt to lighten my skin mm-hmm. as well because i had a, and that a, a pushes us to who was bleaching. lighter as well yeah it's a mess like you don't want to i'm push telling you there's so the- many instances oh my god so uh, there's actually another friend of ours i'm gonna put her name out there but she's lighter skin also from ghana as well um she has beautiful nice textured natural hair before natural hair thing became a whole movement oh. and she also got made fun of we were in the same gym class and um she was getting made fun of for her hair this is from coming from black girls who did nothing but relax their hair <laughs> right i'm not coming for anybody who relaxes the hair that's but totally all done fine. back then but a lot let's of us admit into it. let's be real your natural texture is not that silky smooth so please stop it okay <laughs> that all that self-hate that you're directing at her is really at yourself um, okay so we go to the next questions yes so do you have preferences that you now think were actually discriminatory in hindsight after this episode Yes, absolutely. Like I said, um, I had a little episode in 2016 where I had dealt with issues with white friends where, you know, they were being fake to me. Um, I would like explain to them that one of their friends was being kind of off or saying ignore, something to me. Act like they're uh, gaslighting you. Yeah. Or brush it off. Like, oh, it's not that serious. Oh, she's just like that. Uh, 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 uh. And on top of that, a of course, lot of white people are with yes. issues in general. Oh, yeah. General issues that don't affect them personally. Mm-hmm. They gaslight you and avoid it. That's why we're still dealing with racism and colorism. Right. They refuse to acknowledge what they, their hand in the problem. Let's. And it's very unfortunate. Um, and also, like I said, 2016, of course, the election went on. People really showed their ass when it came to racism. I was like, fuck white people. I'm done. (laughs) Of course, that was very ignorant. And Mm -hmm. I've retracted that mindset. (laughs) I was like, all black, everything only, you know? So, Mm -hmm. um, I definitely change my mind from that like i said for now i just look at the people for who they are instead of you know their skin color right and i definitely had the same issue Mm -hmm. actually a complete opposite at one point i was so tired of black men that i was like fuck black man i'm gonna date white man only and um that lasted for all of three months (laughs) (laughs) so of course it didn't work it wasn't a real preference or real discriminatory thing it was just a moment um momentary yeah frustration and I, I took it back. I was like, you know what? It's not, it's not what it's cracked up to be. So let me just go back. To did my you date life. any white boys? Yes, I did. About two or three. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have one wow. right now that I talk to as a friend. Mm-hmm. But like, it was just one of those moments that I had. I was just like, mm, I don't know. We can't wow. go back to that time. Like, <laughs> it's not like that no more. But yeah, mm-hmm. you live and you learn. So yeah. You have growth. So there, that's what that's for. So yeah, with that being said, yeah, everything we're saying right now is just, if you feel as though you might be discriminating, you probably are. Just mm-hmm. either go back to listen to this episode or just go online and Google preferences versus discrimination. Once again, preference yeah. is when you like a bunch of things, but you choose one thing more than the other because you just have a preference and you tend to But you're still open to the others. You're, exactly. You're still yes. open. You don't completely eliminate those other options. You just tend to gravitate to Towards one. Same thing mm-hmm. with personalities. You gravitate towards a certain type. Like if you don't like men who are aggressive, you gravitate towards nicer men. Doesn't mean you can't handle men who are aggressive. You just can't handle it for too long. Mm-hmm. And you want always a nice guy. Yeah. So it's like that. But if you're the kind of person who only only one side and never the other and even talk shit about the other side and you know, it becomes discriminatory. Yeah. And it's not just a preference anymore it's See, the thing is you can lifestyle. have a preference without talking shit about what yep. your non-preference and that's is. what the issue with a lot of black women that's what we have when people say we don't like black women we don't prefer black women and you start talking shit about black women that's where we start to mm-hmm. have issues not because we care about when you, you answer like. the question so why do you like xyz <laughs> well because black women right and that's, why, that's you why, that. why you lose us we didn't ask you that we didn't ask you what you don't like about us and we're not really pressed about trying to bring you to our side either we really could care less I need you to understand that yes. we don't care at all when you start talking shit about us you're now spoiling our name in these streets and we are now we're got, forced to say something exactly. and now, it's that not that. a fight I want to be in I, I really don't care such a frustrating fight and argument yes. like, just keep my name out your mouth that's all we ask that's say. it anyway so that, with that said guys resources <laughs> 
<laughs> so how to support Black Lives Matter? Of course, we say that every episode. We we'll posted a link on how to support the SARS movement happening in Nigeria, as mm-hmm. well as the Congo movement as well. Um, if you don't know what those are, please Google them or just use the link in our description. Uh, therapy sources uh, include primary care physician, Instagram for at BetterHelp, and employee assistance programs and therapyforblackgirls.com. BetterHelp, with the link we provide under our mm-hmm. resources, will give you one month free trial instead of the one week mm-hmm. trial offered. We have a link for dating preferences if you need to understand if you're still struggling. Do I have a preference or am I just discriminating? Mm -hmm. Click that link. We have a Time magazine that does uh, a little conversation on colorism in America. We have weight discrimination as well. Uh, If you're confused on... A lot of men have weight discrimination. I don't know if it's like a backlash because of the height discrimination. But (laughs) a lot of men tend to have weight discrimination more because more bigger women are willing to... or More skinny women are willing to date bigger men than skinny men are willing to date bigger women. Yeah. So that's a conversation for another day. But you know who you are. all of this. Exactly. (laughs) You can't handle it, apparently. (laughs) So get it together. But anyway... (laughs) Is weight discrimination illegal? Mm-hmm. We have information from HR uh, Advisor Daily, mm-hmm. and apparently we talked about that. It is not illegal. You can still get discriminated mm-hmm. against your weight, take them to court, and they'll still win. Um, it's sad, it's but unfortunate. yeah. And then we have a link for the mental health of the day, which Annabelle is going to read right now. All right. So the mental health tip this week is to boost your brain power. And you can do so by treating yourself to a couple of pieces of dark chocolate. Yes, this is an actual mental health tip. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Chocolate does release dopamine in your brain. It works. Not only that, but it makes you happy. (laughs) I was going to say, I think it has uh, magnesium too, which is a good vitamin for your body, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It doesn't tell you what type of dark chocolate either. Could be a dark Dark chocolate woman. 60%. Or dark chocolate man. Or dark chocolate chocolate. (laughs) It's up to you. (laughs) I'm available. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me not put myself out there like that. <laughs> but um, the flavonoids, caffeine, and theobromine in chocolate are thought to work together to improve alertness and mental skills. And I don't overdo it because y'all going to be like, oh, this podcast told me to eat chocolate. Look, if you gain weight because yeah. you ate all it's the chocolate. It's good for the heart. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still chocolate. You know, there's still sugar. True. And, I mean, dark chocolate has less sugar. But it has sugar. Like, it's still chocolate. <sighs> So, I mean, you can eat it, yes. just everything at, you know, a certain amount. Just, that's all I'm sure, saying. Sure, everything in moderation. Yes, please. I don't want them coming back talking about this. <laughs> I'm only feeling a certain type of way right now because I am a dark chocolate addict. Do you eat the whole bag at once? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Dove well, well, chocolate with the almonds? Oh, my God. I can't relate. Yo, if y'all love me, cash at me so I can go get me some, okay? Like, yeah. my birthday's coming around. It's around the corner. Like, if you're listening yeah. to this and you're a friend of mine and you consider yourself a friend of mine, <laughs> yeah, what's up? Um, yeah, I'm just we're, we're trying to post Annabelle's cash app at the bottom so then you can cash app her money to buy chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Support her lifestyle. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for coming to another episode of yes. I Got Problems. We'll and I hope time. that we were able to solve one of your problems. Bye. Bye. <laughs>